Hey, Anne. How's it going? Good. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm excited to be on location downtown at the Hewitt building. We got mm. out of the office for today's video. It's awesome. This is the basement, the very basement, where the Never Never Land statues from Point Defiance were once held. There's a great tiki bar over there in the corner. You can't see it, but uh, you can rent this space if you want to. Absolutely. What, uh, what did you bring with you on um, location today? This is a picture of my dear little kitten, Alfred Pennyworth. Oh, um, well here, I, ha I have a photo, I'm sure, of, of uh, my dog. Let's see. Oh, here's Kelly. Aww. Yes. It's a little furry baby. Mm -hmm. Isn't she sweet? She is. Why is she in a box? Well, you keep your pet in a box? Look, <laughs> every pet owner has their limits. That's true. And when it comes to selling your house, you need to have a plan for your uh, I see where we're going with this. So listen, when you are getting ready to put your home on the market, you're worried about cleaning and staging and repairs and all those things. If you have a cat or a dog, you also need to come up with a game plan for your pet. Absolutely. Let's start with dogs. Okay. What's your best practices for selling your house when you own a dog? Big dog, small dog? Yeah, because sometimes, you know what? Small dogs are the most vicious in my experience. And a lot of people, no, real talk, <laughs> um, a lot of people put up little baby gates and they leave their toy, whatever, in there, barking and scratching. Yeah. Um, the it's dog very has, sad. Well, I mean, it's sad, but the dog that bit me when I was showing homes was a miniature dachshund. So they often are the meanest. So don't think that just because your dog is little that it would be okay to either leave them in the house, you know, or somewhere that's not secure. So well, and, I mean, it's a dog nature, right? Their job is to protect your house and you are injecting stranger Strangers. after stranger into the house because that's what you want. As many people see the house as possible so you can get the best offer. But very scary for your, yeah, for and your animals. I've had the experience um, as a cat person. I seem to attract a cat kitty clientele, if you will. And you know, some people are uncomfortable around dogs. They're afraid of dogs that yeah. they've been bitten. You know, they, they don't, they, they're, they're scared. Even if your dog is the nicest dog in the world, it's, they just won't want to go in or they won't be comfortable in your house. Well, often one of the things I find if you're out with buyers, it'll rush your showing. So definitely got, rushes the showing. You know, even if you put your dog in the garage or you lock them in a kennel in the laundry room, they're barking, they're whining, or they're yeah. sad, and your lovely sympathetic buyers are very concerned about them. So yeah. think about a plan for your dog. Sometimes I'll tell people, think about kenneling your dog for the first week. Sending them to grandma's house. Yeah, if you've got a, a trusted pet sitter, something like that, because you're gonna have more showings, uh, more activity at the house. It will help you keep the house clean. Absolutely. Because no matter how much we love our pets, they do produce a lot of pet hair. Yeah, and that's absolutely. not a good thing when you're, when you're first getting on the market. Well, this isn't just about dogs. No, no. This, there are cats, cat concerns too. What are the concerns for cats? I mean... Well, listen, I know that your nose doesn't work all that great. It's true. But there's a fun game in real estate called Sniff Out the Litter Box. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> when you're going through a house and you sort of faintly smell it in the air and you're they not sure They do poop in the house. Most, most of them, anyway. Yes. Um, the other thing is, I'm always nervous because I'm not that much of a cat person. Yeah. Um, is that cat supposed to be inside? Does yes. that cat live here? Yes. Is, and, and not only that, I don't know about, about your cat, but my little Alfred, he wants to be outside and he's not allowed to go outside because he gets in kitty fights. Right. So they are like ninjas. And if you have, I am, I'm, I'm they a gift. They sense your weakness. They sense your weakness. I am gifted at keeping my cat in the house. But you know, if you have strangers coming over to your house, it's very hard to keep the cats in. So sometimes neighbor cats are coming in and that's not the people's cat. Sometimes, I mean, the <laughs> cats are crazy. So anyway, uh, I think if you're so a- how, how do you deal, how would you suggest to deal with the cats? I think cat person to cat person, um, in an ideal situation, if they can um, go, even just like dogs, if they can go somewhere else, that's, that's the best situation because then there's no litter box at all and there's no worry of little fluffy escaping into the nether and having real estate agents and their little heel and their little suits chasing cats up and down the street. Or I had somebody who put a house on the market and did a really good job a few weeks, if you know you're going to list, mm -hmm. a few weeks before, got one of those nice little cat condo litter boxes right. that was very discreet, found a new location in the house to put it that was more out of the way mm -hmm. and started sort of training the cat to get used to it. That's a great idea. Well in advance. If you, you know, a lot of times people are selling condos, there's really only one spot you can put the litter box and you know, we, we don't all have the option of loaning our cats to someone else to watch for a while. So in that situation, if you're a once or twice a week scooper, you need to get daily scooping. If you love the environment and you use the, the little pine, you know, non-clumping uh, cat litter, you need to switch to the super clump baking soda hardcore brand. This is a short term thing to get your place sold. Just to get it sold because and, and this is the thing, and I, I've said this before in our videos, I, I don't have a very strong sense of smell, and I, I, I don't usually smell these smells, but some people, like people like Anne, they can smell 
they can smell this stuff a mile away. I and if your cat out. And we love our pets. We have articulated this. Yeah. But this will cost you money. So ask someone that you trust. It, it when in doubt, and and the part is, you know, y'all have that friend with a good schnoz. Yeah, and it's litter boxes, but it's also sort of the general smell of the house. Maybe there's a room that your dog stays in during the day, and you don't know that it smells. Ask someone else to to take a sniff. The biggest issue, though, is the security of your pet, the security Absolutely. of the people visiting your house, uh, the liability. You know, if your dog bites somebody. That's a, it's a real serious issue. It goes well beyond, obviously, whether or not your home sells for maximum dollar. Absolutely. So make a plan uh, for your pet's benefit as well as yours. Do it for Alfred. Hmm.